Today we'll talk about congestive heart failure drugs. It really is just as easy as ABCD. The drugs that we use to treat congestive heart failure are hypertensive drugs. These drugs work in several different ways, but they all are working to do the same thing, which is to relieve or to decrease pressure that is on the heart. First thing for us to know, it is important to make sure that you understand what cardiac output actually is. I'm a, a reminder, it is actually beats per minute, BPM, times SV, which is stroke volume, that is the actual volume that your heart pushes out with each contraction, um, and that equals cardiac output. So if we have the average adult, and let's say their heart rate, their beats per minute, is 70, and we know that the average stroke volume for an adult is about 70 cc's per contraction, then that would give us a cardiac output of about 4,900 4, cc's per minute. So it doesn't take long to do the math on that if you multiply one minute times 60 minutes in an hour, 60 minutes in an hour, times 24 hours, and, and so on and so on, you can see that the heart already has a lot on, you know, on duty to do. So if we can decrease what the heart has to do, then we can put less stress on the heart, and that's what we're trying to accomplish here. So back to the drugs. First drug, A. A is for ACE inhibitors. And ACE inhibitors work by decreasing volume. And we'll get into that um, a little bit later in another video maybe. But really they work by acting on the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. Hopefully you kind of remember something about that from anatomy physiology. But that is the action of the ACE inhibitor. Then we have B, beta blockers. And I definitely am gonna do a little um, short video on beta blockers, so come back and watch that as well. But beta blockers, um, Beta, beta blockers block beta. That's kind of like a tongue twister, but that's exactly what they do. And by doing that, they decrease rate. That's what we're using them for. I know some of you had asked about um, bradycardia being a side effect of beta blockers on one of the quizzes a couple of weeks back or something. And yes, you're right, it is. That is what we're trying to do is decrease the rate, right? So the answer, I believe, what we were looking for was hypotension in that situation. But back to beta blockers real quick. Um, if you'll think sympathetic nervous system, which if you remember is that fight flight of the body has, by blocking beta 1, and beta 1 is the heart, we cause the heart muscle to have to relax, thus decreasing the rate. Okay, C. C is for calcium channel blockers. Calcium is the glue that links the electrical system in the heart to the mechanics of the heart. And calcium is, in the body, acts as kind of like a hardener, a stiffener. So um, like keeping um, your bones hard, it also works to kind of stiffen up um, or give the heart some kind of stiffening or hard, hardness to the heart muscle itself. So when we block calcium with calcium channel blockers, we soften up the heart, allowing it to have like a full contraction and to get in a full squeeze with every contraction of the heart. And that's what we're trying to do. If you think about um, calcium channel blockers, think about after a big workout. Um, if you go to a, a gym or you have a big workout, they always tell you that you should stretch after your workout because that will keep your muscles from getting tight and stiff later. So by stretching or squeezing the muscles, we soften them. I don't know if that correlation will stick with you or not, but anyway. All right, D. D is for diuretics. We're still on congestive heart failure drugs. D is for diuretics. Diuretics decrease fluid volume, so we're decreasing the actual volume. If you can always remember, in the potty, not the body, that's what we're trying to do here. These drugs help increase the fluid's exit from the body. 